Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers. Today we're going to be doing another obscure ship review. We're going to be looking at a couple ships I found on the workshop that I really do think need a little bit of light shone upon them because they are really cool. Um, so I want to have a little a little peek um, in today's video. So we've got two ships. Um, we've got the Beaver and then the ITV. I believe this is the FX. Uh, N-I-X. Nix. I don't know how you say it, but... These are just, I mean, look at this. That's so cool. Um, uh, yeah, I just thought we should have a little uh, a little mooch about these ships really quick. Um, and just sort of look a bit closer at them. Because, yeah, I was basically looking at the, them on the Steam Workshop. And the, the details on this are absolutely amazing. I mean, look at the cockpit, for example. See how they've done that staggered layout. So you've got the industrial one here. And you've got, I believe this is the truck. No, wrong. Wrong, wrong window to be typing that in. The cab, the cab cockpit. I've not, I've not seen that before. Um, and then we've got another ship over there. But yeah, so let's have a look at the ITV Nix. I don't know if it's N I X or Nix, but the independent transport vessel known as Nix is a decently armed shuttle used for transport between worlds. Although it requires travellers to wear their suits for the duration of the trip due to the hull not being airtight, it does provide speedy travel with its quad thrusters can house four travellers and has a crew of pilot and a gunner. The ball turrets are controllable but do not shoot due to me not wanting them to make due to me due to me not wanting to make them shoot. Alright. <laughs> well you could actually just swap out um yeah. All you'd have to do is swap out this this bit here and then that bit there with Gatling guns. Um then put a conveyor in the middle and like a small cargo container or something so you can hand load them. So yeah, it would be pretty easy to do to be fair. Um, I might even give it a go myself. Um, we've also got these side mounted Gatling turrets as well. Um, so it's got, yeah, it's, it's, it's like you said, decent armament. Um, we'll have a little look around the outside. We've got the, the big, obviously the quad thrusters at the rear. And then we've got this landing gear set up. So custom, custom landing gear using the, I was going to say new, but they're not that new anymore, the small la um, mag plates. We've got some really nice detailing going on here. We've got use of these new barrels as well, um, and then the new beacon too, which I think this looks really cool. This looks absolutely space engineers, I like it. But they almost look like big air intakes, you know, at, at a glance. Um, so we've got more use of beacons around there. It's just a really creative, it almost looks... Or reminds me of something out of Star Wars, um, initially. There's a fair bit of ribbing going on, I have to say. It, it, almost too much. Um, probably too much, actually, if you factor it in the rear. But the, the overall shape of the ship is lovely. It's very reminiscent of like a, uh, like a, I don't know, a Jedi frigate. What were they called? What the hell are they called? The one that's in the start of Phantom Menace. I can't remember what it how how dare I forget the name of that ship? The council, the council, is it the, the council class cruiser? That thing. It's not really a cruiser, but anyway, we've got sporadic um, hydrogen thrusters as well as um, these new fan thrusters as well, just sort of dotted around, which is nice to see. Um, and yeah, a little bit of texturing going on in between the armor panels. Got a survival kit up here, so you can obviously recharge uh, a connector on the dorsal side. Got an entrance there in the uh, anus, and then we don't have a connector on the bottom. This is the part of the ship that people always neglect, and uh, you can see here that it is incredibly flat. Looks like this ship's just teabagged an anvil. Um, so, quick tip when you're building, flip your ship upside down and give it some love. Give the, give the bottom some love, guys, you know? You know what I'm talking about? you gotta, you got to give the bottom the same amount of love as the top. Anyway, enough about bottoms. Well, never enough about bottoms, but for now, let's enter the bottom. So, we've got a button which lowers this little ramp here. You can see a few bu bullet holes as well, so I don't know. Oh, I don't know if it's been shot at. I should say, actually, the builder of these uh, crafts is known on Steam as, <clears throat> and I promise you this is his name, Smelly Poo Poo. So, yeah, the links will be in the description anyway. Go go check him out and uh, give him some love. So we've got a, a little walkway here built with these. Uh, these are the grated windows from the um, Wasteland update. We've got some 
racks here so you can grab your guns while well, your ammo. There's a door. And now we're inside. So we've got two air vents. Even though this isn't apparently pressurized, which it isn't. Um, so maybe it's just for looks. We've got a couple of mood lights with the survival kit here so you can recharge. Coming in here, we've got the seats, so you can, yeah, oh well, it's, it's no small wonder it's not airtight. Um, you can put four people in here, you've got another ammo rack on the floor, got a bit of texturing going on as well, which does help, nice little style of a ramp there. If you, these are like um, those handrails that you hold onto, you know, you're on the bus. Turret controllers here, um, and then you've got a picture of Saturn, in case you wanted to see Saturn. Um, and then we've got, I believe, that is part of the new update and then it looks like a system map or something not too sure what that is um, but I don't think you can actually access the cockpit from here so this is purely for passengers but you can walk you can get your full your full noggin in there and that button is actually really nice it's a nice little ramp they've got going on there so let's hop in the cockpit so you can actually reach it from the ground which is useful for survival and, and things like that. Um, so we've got all the hydrogen thrusters, we've got all the atmospheric thrusters on off, we've got the mag plates you can control, the pistons are the landing gear. I mean we could probably do a little tea bag right now, right? We do a little dance. Um, and then the rotor at the back, hinge sorry, is the, the entrance. My controls are backwards because I'm left handed. Get over it. Um, right. And that's, uh, that's pretty much all there is. I don't know if we can actually control those little turrets, but we're going to try. There's a lot of turret controls. <laughs> There's many. I think they were used as Greeble. Aha. So this one is actually one of the turrets, so you can control it here. And the turret is actually fully functional. Where is it? Yeah, the turrets are actually fully functional. You just can't actually shoot them, which is a shame, because that would be really cool. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't do that. I mean, they look good, I guess, if, it's, if you go for looks. Anyway, let's give it a little whirl. So we want to um, unlock all the mag plates. Then we can take off. And then we're going to retract the landing gear. And we can give it a little fly. Could do with a couple more gyros. It has no onboard hydrogen production, so you need to refill it. No onboard O2 gens. Side thrust is a bit lacking. Very lacking. Um, but it's got good up thrust. Mmm, actually, I don't know. If you've got a bit more, a bit of cargo, a bit of junk in the trunk, so to speak, you're probably going to want a bit more up this thrust, but you can just cram some more of those, because uh, we've got plenty of power. You can put some more of those upwards fans, um, and you'll be, uh, you'll be hunky-dory. Nice view from the cockpit. So let's drop down the, uh, the pistons. Let's come in for the landing. The reverse thrust is alright as well. Yeah, the forwards thrust just makes it hard to, uh, Hard to finesse. There you go. Easy as that. Quite an easy flight, I have to say. So, yes, what would I do? I would put guns in here. I would put... Uh, I'd probably double the upwards thrust in terms of the Atmos. I'd probably put two more of those uh, fan thrusters in. Um, I'd probably dot some more Atmos around it as well. And I'd find, a, I'd find a spot for an O2 generator. You never know when you're going to run out of hydrogen. Um, and if you're in space, you're going to be conked. Other than that, pretty cool. I'd also probably smooth out the hull a little bit. Get rid of some of the ribbon. Um, it's great for condoms, not so much ships. So I'd probably just try and iron it out and work with the shapes instead. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, like I have to say, I don't mean to be critical. It's an absolutely gorgeous ship. And like I said, I wasn't planning on doing a video today. I was just having a little scroll through the workshop to see how much of the Christmas calendar has been eaten by Omega. Um, and it, I just saw this, I was like, yo, that is one fine looking ship. Um, so you're going in all the right, all the right directions. Um, I think there's just a few um, little tidying up bits you can do and you've got, you've got some serious front page ships 
um, in the in the works. I can tell you that. Um, so over here we have part two, or another ship in the collection. This is a different faction by the same person. Uh, this is called the Beaver. So this is the TCU Beaver, which twerks as well, which is always good. Another fantastic example of a sugar-coated flying coffin from the engineers of TCU. The TCU Beaver is a troop transport that has a seating capacity of seven troops, one gunner and the pilot. Questionable stability when flying, lack of an airlock, and little reverse thrust at all contribute to a silly mortality rate. At least he's honest. It does jiggle a little bit, but I guess that's reminiscent of the, uh, the ship's description, right? So it's troop transport. I'm guessing these guys are the Junker faction in his lore. Um, we've got a couple of rear-facing guns here, so we've got an auto cannon turret, we've got a missile turret, which packs one hell of a punch, to be fair. Um, and I think that's it in terms of the uh, the, the, the armory, so to speak. Um, it's a really interesting layout sh for a ship, though. I quite like it with the top the top cabin. It's really creative use of of small grids. The landing gear are also really cool on this, how it sort of springs out. Um, I'll show you in a minute. And then you've got the ramp here, which does work if you approach it at the right. You've got to hit it. Ah, whatever. I did it before. Um, you come in, you've got seats just arranged. You've got a little cover here, which is cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just like he said, you can come in here. Oh, you can't really fit in there. Uh, you've got a thruster in there just to burn your head off. These are decorative. Thank you for your sacrifice. And then we've got, looks like a, a tank of some sort. And then this is the gunner seat. So here we can access the auto cannon. And where's the bloody, why is it over there? And the missile turret. So, yeah. Go time. This will, uh, well, it's go time. I guess that just, uh, <laughs> and then also you've got these ramps, so there's, the screens cover the doors, which is two part really, I mean, one, it's a retractable ramp, so you don't have to have it out all the time, and two, it's actually a bit like a blast door, do you know what I mean, like it's a bit of a, um, so you can have this open while you're flying and you can look out like this, the troops can look out and they're also protected, I, th I thought it was a cool feature. And there's a lot of moving parts on this, which is nice to see. Just jiggles. Then if we get into the cockpit, we've got a nice hood going on here with the uh, the holographic LCD. Um, and I'll just show you, if we just take off here, this thing struggles to fly, by the way. Uh, but he did say that, so that's fair enough. Um, we need to turn on the Atmos, actually. There we go. Um... Let me show you the landing gear, because they are really cool. So first you attract the pistons, and then the rotors. So it's a two-part system, and you tuck them in like that. And this thing doesn't fly too bad, to be honest with you. Um, it just turns like an absolute dump truck. Um, but it is, it is just a troop transport, to be completely fair to it. It's got good acceleration, it's just the, the lateral movements and that, that are a bit lacking. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty nippy. I just think it looks really cool. Probably better off using the uh, the arrow keys to turn this than the mouse. So try and fly it with the arrow keys. Or, 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 okay, no, stop, stop that, stop that. Yeah, you see the side thrust, two hydros, leaves a little bit to be desired. The top window, though, is really nice. It also drifts, and I think that's in part due to all of the uh, subgrids. So you could do with a management script, potentially, or something of that nature. Alright, let's look to land. So first, we want to extend the rotors, hinges, bloody hell. And then pistons. And then you can just drop it. And it has like a, a suspension effect. Where it absorbs the landing. Which is really cool to be honest with you. So that's the Beaver. And that's the Nix. If you guys enjoyed this video. Go and check out these ships in the comment section down below. The creator's also got 
um, a load more on the workshop. They just released like a light bomber as well, which is look pretty cool. Um, I just wanted to give some love because they're, they're just quite pretty. Um, and if you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe to support the channel. And as always, take care, everybody.